Income tax 2022-2023 filing status software example problem. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our form 1040. We're using Lacert tax software to populate it. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can also get access to the Form 1040 related schedules, related forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. We're focused in this time on the filing status, which is right up top on the Form 1040, where we have the single filer, the married filing joint, married filing separate, MFS, head of household, HOH, qualifying surviving spouse, QSS. So we'll go through some scenarios on some of these items. Down below, we've got our filer starting off with a single filer, Mr. Anderson, address down below no dependents at this point in time the income we're just going to stick at the 100,000 w2 income for our generic start point and then down below we're just going to have the standard deduction the 12,950, getting us to the taxable income of 87,050. now the impact of changing the filing status on the actual tax equation will mainly be here in the standard deduction so notice this is kind of linked to the calculation of the standard deduction. We're going to talk about the standard deduction in a, in a future presentation. So we'll dig into that a little bit more in the future. And then it has an impact on the actual tax calculations because we have a progressive tax system. And you would expect there would be different tables depending on the filing status most easily seen. If you're going from a single filer to a married filing joint then you would think that the income levels will be like doubled or possibly could be and therefore you'd have to kind of adjust your progressive tax tables to kind of fix that whole system so let's go back to the first tab and focus mainly up top on the status so the single status and this is my my thought process with the statuses usually would be your first thought is someone either married or not married right and if they're not married then the options that they have available to them would either be single, that would be the worst option for, for the purposes of tax filing at least, and then if they could step up, they would step up to the head of household, which could give you added benefit in terms of the standard deduction and possibly the tax tables, but you can only do that if normally you had a qualifying dependent in the mix. If you're married, and then you could have a step up from there, to the qualifying surviving spouse but that would be a rare situation where you you know had a married couple hopefully it's a rare situation and one of them uh passed away and then you'd be looking at whether or not they qualify for the surviving spouse if they're married then they can't jump back to single or head of household unless considered separated or divorced but rather have to then choose the married filing joint, which is the normal option most people will be choosing. When married, it's usually going to come out to be most beneficial or married filing separately, which might be chosen under some scenarios, possibly in a situation where one spouse is thinking the other spouse isn't being honest with their taxes or something, and maybe they want to separate for that reason, or they just want to separate their returns, or maybe in some cases it would come out better uh, tax-wise in total to file married filing separately, but that's fairly rare of a situation on that third one uh, note that you could again have different scenarios in terms of the community property states uh, versus non-community property states in terms of how you would handle married filing separately so you got to make sure that you understand what the situation would be if someone wants to file uh, in that uh, area but usually people would be filing married filing joint when married so notice here we got a single filer and they're not married, so they're locked into the single file or nothing else they can really do. They're on the worst filing status because they, there's nothing that's going to pull them up from, from that status 
because uh, they're not married and they don't have any uh, dependents. So then, now if they had a qualifying dependent, which would usually be down here, they might be able to move up to the head of household. So let's add a dependent, see what that would look like. So now we've moved the status from single over to the head of household and everything else is, is the same up top for the taxpayer and we don't have a spouse situation, but now we have a situation where we have the dependent down here, which is normally what you would kind of expect to see. So uh, if you're talking, if you're thinking about talking to a taxpayer and you're like, okay, what's the filing status? Uh, if they're single, if they're not married, then the question would be, are there dependents? If there are dependents, then it's possible, quite likely possibly that they can move up from the single to the head of household. Now note, this is often where there's kind of confusion or gray area if there's split custody in a child uh, type of situation where you have uh, two parents that have some kind of split custody uh, situation because note that we can normally only have a dependent being claimed in one area. So basically from a tax standpoint, the IRS doesn't want to have, you know, two people getting the benefit of, you know, the one child and the benefits that could be gotten from a child from a tax standpoint is if they're a single uh, filer, they can move up the status to head of household, which would have a benefit possibly on the standard deduction if they're taking the standard as opposed to the itemized deduction and possibly to the uh, taxes on the, the tax calculations from, from the, the calculations there as well. There could also be changes to thresholds in terms of income thresholds possibly with relations to credits and uh, deductions. Now note if there's multiple children uh, that are involved then there's not going to be any added benefit from the standpoint of filing status. So if someone was single and they had like one dependent, then that might be, a, that would be possibly enough to push them up depending on the circumstances from single to head of household. If there's another dependent involved, then you might get a benefit from the dependent because the dependent has other tax benefits, such as possibly a credit, this one being uh, qualified for the child tax credit, which we'll get into later. So there's other things involved, but right now we're just focusing in on the movement from a, a single to head of household. So that usually involves one, you know, qualifying, usually dependent. In some cases, you might have a situation where they don't actually have to be a dependent. So if they're in a situation where they don't, uh, where they aren't actually your dependent, uh, and that's because of like lo those kind of unusual scenarios. Here's just a recap of them. So we're saying, okay, we're gonna kind of go ahead of household, uh, but we've got this unusual scenario where they're not our dependent. For example, your unmarried qualified child who isn't your dependent, uh, your, your married qualified child who isn't your dependent only because you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's uh, 2022 return, your qualifying child who, even though you are the custodial parent, isn't your dependent because of the rule of children of divorced or separated parents. Now that's kind of unusual, but if that was the case, then you're not going to see it down here. So if you were to just remove the dependent down here and still uh, have a head of household claim. So if I was to say, I'm just going to make this, let's say inactive right now, we'll just delete it. If I go back on over, now I've got a head of household claim, but nothing on the face of the return indicating a qualificating factor because I don't have the dependent because they don't qualify as a dependent. So then I would have to put them basically right here. So they would basically go right here on the forms. That's unusual, but might come up. So here we have an example, head of household. And this would be the qualifying kind of factor that we're putting into play here, even though there's not a dependent down below. Okay. So now let's move up. Let's let's actually go back to just to just where we were before, and then we'll move to a married status. So I'm going to say, let's go back to just the single status. So I'm going to go back to single, boom, and then let's move up to a married filing uh, joint situation. So now we're going to say they get married. Now if they get married any time in 2022, even if it's in December then you would count it as married. So that's that cutoff kind of question that comes into play with regards to getting married, then uh, you're, you're gonna, it's, as long as it happened within the tax year, in this case, 2022, it would be moved, it would be within uh, married filing joint possible or married filing separate if they are married.
So that's kind of a consideration you want to keep in mind if anybody asks you about, you know, tax planning and being married. Oftentimes getting married is a tax benefit if you're like in the middle income kind of area because the, the, the standard deductions will double typically and so will the and so will the tax tables will typically be beneficial. But if you're on the low income and people are getting the child tax credits and the earned income tax credit, it's possible you end up in a situation where it's not uh, beneficiary from a tax basis. Doesn't mean you don't want to do it, but you might want to think, OK, sh where should I have it in 2022 or the current tax year or maybe have another tax year without getting married and, and plan it after that time or something like that. Right. So in any case, let's move it up to married. So now, of course, moving the filing status to married, you'd, you'd be pushing it over here. And of course, then you would expect that you have a, a spouse involved, another social security number involved uh, on uh, the tax return. And the implications down below would be on the standard deduction increases significantly. We'll talk more about the standard deductions later, but you can see a big uh, jump there, which is indicated in this little box to the left. And on page two, you can have a big difference in terms of the tax rates uh, as well, because the progressive tax tables will be different from married uh, to single. Now, of course, when you think about people getting married from a projection standpoint, you, you have to think, OK, yeah, the standard deduction got doubled. But before you had two tax returns that both had. So the question is, when you combine the incomes together and whatnot, are you are you better or worse off from a total tax standpoint? The two tax returns, two separate entities now being combined into one entity. And so those projections, you got to keep that in mind when you're doing those kind of projections, as opposed to if you're moving from single to head of household, where you're really dealing with just one person at that point in time, or now you have a dependent possibly. But when you're going from obviously single to married filing joint, you got two tax returns that you're now putting together. So so when you're trying to think of would you be better off uh, with two tax returns versus one, you got to take that into consideration. Now, of course, the other option is to file married filing separately. Uh, if married, you can't go back to single or head of household unless divorcing or separating. So let's go back on over and say, OK, let's go to uh, let's go to married if we go to married filing separate, this is what it looks like up top filing status. Now we've got the married filing separate status and n down below, we don't have the spouse located here, but rather, you know, up top to indicate the, the other factor involved, we've got the social security uh, number here. So obviously from the IRS's perspective, they would expect then if this spouse was filing married filing separate, that the other spouse would also be filing that way. So they would expect you would think to have another return. Yeah, and maybe I'll file a federal income tax return. And this will will help them to kind of tie that in and say, OK, both spouses are doing that. If the other spouse filed single and this spouse filed married filing separate, you would think that the IRS, just in terms of their machine, just in terms of their computer, would say, hey, wait, something funny is happening here. Now, as you would expect with the the rates down below, the the standard deduction is going to go back down kind of to what it was in a single and the tax rates are going to go back uh, to similar to what you would expect on a single area but married filing separate is not the same as filing single so you want to make sure to keep that in mind if, if people are asking questions in terms of well if i get married then if i lose some of the benefits that i had while being single such as possibly benefits for the child tax credits and the earned income tax credit. Well, then I can always just bounce back to basically being single or head of household for taxes by using the married filing separately. You can't basically you can't do that because the married filing separately will likely not give you the same kind of benefits for those types of things. So, so because the, the government's going to be wary of people choosing between married filing joint or married filing separate just to take advantage of certain credits like those kinds of credits. So they kind of eliminate them in essence when you file married filing separately. So be careful of that. Also be careful that the way you treat married filing separately could differ depending on state law, whether you're in a community property state or not. So it could be a little kind of confusing in terms of how to file married filing sep separate. Now, now note that remember that the idea of getting married at least from a from a legal standpoint, from a contractual standpoint, is now that you're a partnership, you're like one legal entity. So it's supposed to be kind of difficult from that perspective.
to file separately because you're supposed to be one kind of legal entity. It would be expected you're filing married, filing joint. You guys are doing a joint file? So to kind of parse things out and split them is a little bit, you know, unusual. That's not what what normally happens, but you know, you could do that under certain circumstances. So that is that one. And then you've got, of course, the qualifying uh, surviving spouse. So if in the year of 2022, uh, someone, uh, a spouse passed away, that wouldn't be the date that you would be filing the qualifying surviving spouse generally. You'd still be filing married because the second spouse would still have income or possibly could during that year. So you'd need at least one more year, the final year for that spouse to file and you'd get the benefit of having a married filing joint return in the year of death of one of the spouses. And then in the year after, the question is, is there a, a, a qualifying dependent generally uh, to, to qualify as qualifying surviving spouse, which would be a better status than head of household or single. So that would be the way to go if you can. If not, then you're gonna bounce back most likely to single because you don't have a qualifying dependent, which would move you up to head of household or surviving spouse. So surviving spouse being head better than the head of household. So let's take a look at that. So now we've got the qualifying surviving spouse. Uh, and in that case, you, you would expect then to have generally a dependent a dependent down here uh, in order to hit that qualification and if you didn't have the dependent then you would expect it, you'd be bouncing back to single uh, after that so I basically put in that the year of death was was prior was 2021 because again if the year was of death was 2022 you'd be filing married uh, filing joint so then after that year of death then the question is should you file as we saw, single head of household or sur or, sur or qualifying surviving spouse. And you would think that you would have that dependent in order to, to, to do that third one. So once we get to, as we looked at these kind of dependents, notice that we had some interrelationships here between the filing status and the dependents and then the, the standard deductions as well as the tables on uh, the second page. So in future presentations, we're gonna focus more on the standard deduction so when we dive into the standard deduction we'll, we'll also be touching on the filing statuses again and uh and so there's going to be that and then of course in the future we'll also talk about dependence in terms of who qualifies for the dependence because some of the rules that we looked at is were like well if someone qualifies as a dependent well now the question is who qualifies as a dependent so when we think about the dependence then we'll also think about the benefits of the dependent which could include a change to the filing status, but that's not the only uh, possible benefit of the dependent. The other ones being like credits that might be involved uh, with the dependents as well. So we'll talk about those in future presentations. And we'll also, when we get into those items, we'll kind of double check our numbers with our tax formula in Excel so we can, we can see it in a formula basis too.